in this first meditation or Descartes, he's wondering what exactly he knows. I mean, the situation he's in is actually pretty familiar to us. He notes that a lot of the things that he learned when he was young are actually false. Um, this has happened to us time and time again. We can relate to this. Uh, how many of you were taught that, uh, oh, I don't know, that Christopher Columbus discovered that the Earth was round? No, no. That happened long before Christopher Columbus. Some ancient Egyptians and uh, other ancient civilizations thought the same, or at least there were some people within those civilizations that thought the same thing. Uh, up until, what, 10 years ago, we thought Pluto was a planet. Not anymore. It's been declassified as a planet. It's planetoid, I think, is the word that they use for it now. Um, you know, we used to think that all this solid matter around us was actually solid. But, you know, contemporary phys physics tells us it's mostly empty space, overwhelmingly empty space. History bounds with other examples. We think that we know things from one time and we learn that they're false later. Right? You, you change your beliefs all the time. It, it's part of growing up. Right? You abandon young, immature beliefs and you adopt older, more mature ones. But if, if what you used to believe was false and you believe a different set of beliefs now, what reason do you have to think that all of your beliefs that you have now are true? Right? You, I mean, if history is any kind of indicator here about what happens when you grow older, you abandon older beliefs and you adopt new ones. That means that the beliefs that you have right now, you won't have later on. As you get older, you're going to abandon some beliefs and adopt new ones. So, how are we supposed to know anything to begin with? If any of my beliefs could be rejected by me later on, which ones are true? Descartes struggling with this question. And he decided that the only way that he can know something is if he knows that there's absolutely, positively, no way to doubt it. It absolutely, positively can't be wrong. There can't be a mistake uh, with the beliefs given the evidence. So he sets about trying to find this foundation of beliefs, this foundation, this you know, first set of beliefs from which all others can be derived. And you know, what, he, what he does then is he says, okay, it, I'm going to look at the sources of my belief. Because you know, going through each individual belief would just take way too long. So he's going to look at the sources of his beliefs. It's what he calls principles. These sources of his beliefs. And if there's some kind of flaw in the source of the beliefs, then he's going to reject all the beliefs that come from that source. Well, that sounds like a great project because I really want to know what I can believe. I really want to know what's true, what I know for certain. Even if it's a very small set, if it's a very small number of beliefs that I can know for certain, then at least I can take those and build up a nice body of knowledge. All right, let's get started. Let's go find what we can know for certain. So Descartes taking a serious look at what we can know and he reaches this conclusion that if we have any reason to doubt it whatsoever when we're looking at the principles of the sources of knowledge if we have any reason to doubt it whatsoever we shouldn't take it as knowledge, we should cast it aside until we find something we absolutely cannot doubt. Well it's a good thing that I'm out here in the world and that I can look at the world with my senses. I mean after all my senses are really good, right? So I'm looking at these trees and these flowers over here and I'm looking at this green flower like, that's right, I'm a little colorblind. So, I don't know whether that's green or it's red. Come to think of it, you know, my eyes aren't that great all the time either. You know, I sometimes I look at buildings and they seem really straight and really tall from far away, and then I, I get up close to them and they're kind of angular and the, the appearance changes. I, you know, I think that they're smooth from far away, but I get up close and there's a lot of texture on the buildings. I, I'm looking at these, this moss here on this tree, and you know, I thought it was growing on the tree when I was standing over there, but now 
Now I see it's, it's, it's kind of latched onto the branch. And is this tree even alive? I, I don't know. I mean, my senses told me that this was alive, but maybe now I, maybe I don't know. Um, I mean, it feels like a plant, but would I know the difference if it was a really good fake? Is, is that red or is that green? Well, if I have reason to doubt my senses, then according to Descartes, I can't trust my senses. So all the information that I have for my senses is now gone. Well, that's just depressing. Well, my senses might deceive me sometimes. Maybe I really don't know everything there is to know about the stuff around me. But at least I know there's these things around me. There's this waterfall. There's the trees and the plants. There's the sun and the sky. Surely none of this could be an illusion. I can't be deceived about any of this. Wait a minute. That's not the sky. That's some windows. And, well, wait a minute. These aren't, these aren't real some of these are, some of these are still. I mean, that's not a real waterfall. That's, look, it's, it's got a, it's got a pump over there. The water's being pumped in into this pool. This is all fake. But it's so realistic. But if this is realistic, and this is fake, what else could be fake? Can I be living in a massive delusion? A massive deception? Where the whole world around me is just a one big movie set? Oh no! It looks like that's possible, given the evidence that I have, that this could all be one big contraption, one big deception, a part of a giant conspiracy, where everybody's trying to lie to me. It's not very good at all. I don't even know the world anymore. Well, trying to take a little bit of a break here in this beautiful garden. I mean, I see lots of pretty colors, but you know, I've lost my sen I've lost a, a reason to believe my senses, so I don't even know if. I see these things anymore and you know it could just be one elaborate fake I could be a part of a big deception uh, well at least I know that I'm awake and I'm actually experiencing these things right now it's really a gorgeous garden I remember I had a dream about a garden just like this once I was uh, having lunch over there with some friends of my I had a dream about this garden and it looked just like this. But, but if I had a dream about this garden that looked just like this, how, how, how do I know I'm not dreaming now? Could I be dreaming now? <coughs> I, I mean, the sun was shining just like it is now. And I could hear <coughs> the river just, just, like I hear it now. And there was that building that, and this tree was here just, just like it is now. Am I awake? Yeah, sure, I think I see things around me. I think I see gray rock over here, but my senses could be deceiving me. And I see the green and, the, and I see the wood and the wood looks like it's solid, but you know, maybe I don't see the rot that's in there and it could all fall on my head at any moment. And you know, this could all be an elaborate deception to begin with. And I don't even know if I'm awake. Golly, there's, there's possible deception, possible uh, uh, false beliefs and, and, and fallible sources of information all over the place. Man, I just... Glad at least I have my two hands. I mean, it's not as if I could be fooled about that, right? I, I see what I see. I mean, at least I see something there. 
And you know, at least I have my hands, I could feel my hands. But you know, aren't they, don't, don't hearing aids let people hear things? And, and don't they make cameras now that they can hook up to people's brains and they can, they can see now with the brains and, and the cameras? And wait, what if the technology for that is actually a lot better than I think it is? What, what, if, what if I'm lying in a hospital bed and I've got a bunch of electrodes being fed into my brain? And maybe I'm in a coma. I could be in a coma. But they, they're trying to let me live out a normal life by, by putting electrodes in my brain and just kind of have me run through an elaborate computer program. What if there was a horrible accident and, and my body was destroyed, but only my brain was left? And maybe they just put my, my brain in a vat with the electrodes in there, and I'm, I'm living out a life in a computer program, and you know, the electrodes are feeding sensory information to me, so I, I think and I feel and I, I sense, I have sense, sensory information, and, I, and then, then that way I can feel my hands. This could be an illusion. I may not have hands at all. You know, Come to think of it, you know, that there are greater and more powerful beings and that there are less powerful beings. And, you know, I know I have a mind and I know I have an imagination. But what if there's a being that's much more powerful than I am? Right when I when I have a figment of imagination, you know, I, ma I imagine, you know, like a, a, I, I have this hallway here right now, and I can imagine somebody walking down this way, right? So, yeah, I just imagine somebody walking from over here to over there. I know I can do that. What if I'm a figment of somebody's imagination? What what if? It, it, it's, it's a being so powerful that, it's, that the figments of its imagination are conscious. And he's, this, this being is just imagining me talking to a camera right now. I wouldn't even have hands. I wouldn't even have a brain. I wouldn't have a body at all. I would just be an image. And what if, what if this, this thing that's imagining me just imagined me? And all the memories and, and experiences that, that I have were, were already given to me at, at the moment that, that it imagined me walking around that corner. I, I wouldn't even have been around as long as I think I have. I have reason to doubt my senses. I have reason to doubt that this world is genuine, that it's not an elaborate deception. I have reason to doubt that I'm awake. I have reason to doubt that, that I have a body. I have reason to doubt that I have a brain. I have a reason to doubt that I have any kind of physicality. I have reason to doubt I've existed more than five seconds. Wow, well, for Descartes' standards, right, for me to know something, I have to have absolutely no reason to think that what I know could be wrong. That means that any kind of scenario I can imagine that's consistent with the evidence that I have that's somehow an illusion or false or deception or imagination, that means that any scenario that I, that I have I mean, sorry, any evidence I have that's consistent with any one of those scenarios, I now lose any reason to believe. I mean, this is the high demand, right? This is the high demand for knowledge. You have to be absolutely certain. There's just no possible way you could be wrong. Wow. 
well, I, I might disappear from, the, from this being's imagination the minute I go off camera. You know, kind of think of it, I might just be existing on this image, on this screen. You know, that's not funny. I'm, I'm stuck. Please don't turn the video off. Please don't turn the Now, before you panic, yes, you exist. Yes, you've existed through your whole life. Yes, your senses can, you know, might have some error in there, but you can trust them. Yes, uh, you are actually living in a world where there is no massive deception where you're somehow on a movie set. Um, you know, you do exist beyond the scope of this video. Um, don't panic, right? Like I said, in a philosophy class, it's perfectly appropriate to question what exactly you know and how you know. Now, once you stop watching the video, once you, you know, uh, you know, go about living your life, the world exists around you, okay? The world exists around you. If you see a car coming towards you, get out of the way. Don't doubt that the car is, it may be a figment of your imagination. Just get out of the way, all right? Um, but what Descartes has given us here are some really interesting things to think about when we're talking about our knowledge. I mean, if our standard for knowledge is absolute certainty, well, we might have a real problem here. Because there are lots of scenarios that are, cons that are consistent with the evidence that we have, which would, not, uh, which, which would be contrary to you know, what we think is the real world, uh, and we wouldn't have one reason to go with the skeptical, hy skeptical hypothesis or go with the view that this world really is real. So it raises a real problem for our knowledge, but please believe that you are in the real world. <laughs> you are. Um, so you know, I want you to think about this standard of knowledge that, that Descartes has given us, this absolute certainty with anything we know. And uh, think about, you know, how it actually applies to your life. How much of what you believe is absolutely certain? How much of what you believe could be a deception? And ask yourself, what impact does this have on my knowledge?